Hello everybody, it's Ahmad here. I needed to train Ayolo V4 neural network, so I thought I better document it for myself to remember in the future and for you guys to benefit from that as well. So this is a really, really quick guide on how to train a YOLO V4 neural network that describes the basic fundamentals that you need to know in order to accomplish this simple process. So the three things that we're going to do in order to train our network is first to prepare the data. Here is where you will usually spend most of the time whenever you are training a neural network. And then we are going to fix the training configuration file, right? And then you're going to run a code that's already given to you. So let's go right now and see how exactly our data should look like. So this is the shape of the data that you will be used for the training. It should be an image and with its corresponding text file. Okay, an image with its corresponding text file. And the text file should have the same name as the image. Each text file holds the annotation of the bounding box for that particular image so let's have a quick look inside the text file right now this is this is the annotation for this particular image this number represents the class of the image this number represents the x coordinate of the center of the bounding box this represents the y coordinate of the center of the bounding box this represents the width of the bounding box and the height of the bounding box is the last one right now one thing that you should understand is that it's normalized relative to the dimensions of the image so when we whenever we say 0 0.5 0 0.5 that means that the center is right in the uh, the center is right in the center of the image right and whenever we say one one it means that the width and the height and the height of the bounding box is on the whole image so how do we put the data on this shape in my case i've downloaded this skin cancer okay data set from kaggle over here and when you have a look at the images they look something like this forget about the text files it's not part of the data set okay um the images looks like this so it's already cropped around the object that we want to classify and detect so you don't need to make a, a labeling okay box the whole image is your label box okay so this is why if you get into any of the text okay boxes you will find that the center of the image is the center of the bounding box and the width and height of the image is the width and height of the bounding box which is why we have one one for the width and height of the bounding box and 0 0.5 0 0.5 okay for the center of the bounding box and then this is the class right so all i did for this kind of uh, kaggle okay data set is just to write a very simple uh, python code uh, uh, to generate text files that have the same name as the corresponding image so let's have a quick look at the python code that i've written to generate the text files for the training data this part of the code generates a text file for each image where this text file holds the same name as that particular image and this part of the code writes the content of the text file so for those who want to have a closer look this csv file comes with the training data from Kago and each row of that particular file holds the image name at cell number one of that row right and the thing about this open instruction is that if the text file you are trying to open does not exist it creates one so you can use this instruction to create new text files so this is the csv file i was talking about so what the code actually does is for each row over here it go and reads this particular cell as the file name and it creates a text file for that particular image and then it goes for the next row and the next row and the next row and so on the next part of the code creates the content for each text file we have created in the first part so we have the csv file which includes the uh, number class or the class number of the corresponding image right in the column 64 of each row 
right? So what we do over here in each row of that file, we read that row or, or that cancer type, and then we write this cancer, cancer type, okay, into the text file we want, right? So this is the instruction that defines the content of the text file. Okay, it's the cancer type which we have re uh, read, and then 0 0.5, 0 0.511, which we have explained before. So this is constant amongst all the uh, text files. So this is what you can do whenever you have an already cropped images where the detected object is actually the whole image. You don't need any labeling. So if you're running this code on Google Colab, don't forget to change directory to wherever you have placed the CSV files okay, of the training data. If you want to run it on your laptop, then place this Python folder okay, where the CSV files are placed. All right, so right now we're going to run part of the code in order to install the darknet directory, which will be the foundation of our work. Okay, so this part of the code is just to mount your Google Drive into your Google Colab. Do it this way or any other way you prefer. Okay, and please create a directory where you want to save your dark, darknet framework. Let's call it YOLO v4. Okay, and please change your directory into that folder. All right, so this part of the code, okay, is the one which installs the darknet. It's a bunch of directories that includes everything that will be used in the training process. And this part of the code, you're going to run it in order to make some configurations. If you don't have some clear reasons, you don't have to mess with it. It will trigger the use of the GPU and so on and so forth. Okay, and this part of the code is for the make file. You, can, you will need to also run it as well. Eventually, okay, we're going to run this instruction in order to install some initial weights for our neural network so we can start from a better training point. And please run this instruction as well for some permission issues. The next instruction we have is the training instruction. But before we can run the training instruction, we're going to have to do a couple of things. The first one is to fix the configuration file, which defines the configuration of the training process. And the second one is to place our data our training data in the right directory inside the darknet structure. So let's go ahead and upload the data on the Google Drive. So this is my drive and this is the YOLO v4, which is the folder I've created where all my work is going to be. And this is the darknet which we have installed using the instruction I've actually uh, presented to you. Okay, and inside the darknet, you will find a folder called data. Okay, and right now <clears throat> inside the data, you will create this folder over here. You can call it Pi4 or anything you want. Okay, it does not have to be this name. Okay, and inside this Pi4, you will upload your text and image files over here. All right, so before we go ahead and fix the configuration file, you need to upload this process.py file to the data directory. What this file does is to split the training data into training data and testing data by generating a text file that holds the links to the test images, okay, and at, at, uh, another text file that holds the links to the training images. Before running this file, in order to generate those two text files, okay, you need to fix something inside the file, otherwise it's not going to work. Please. In the current directory, change the name to whatever name you have chosen for your okay, data folder, okay, over here. One more thing, please also change the path okay, of each image to this structure, okay, over here, okay? And then please go to your main code and change the directory to data and run this process folder, okay? So this is how you run the process.py file. So one last thing before we can uh, train, if you go to darknet and configuration, please delete everything you can see and just keep this YOLO v4 custom, okay, dot config. All right, so let's fix the configuration file. Please change the batch to 64, the subdivisions to 16 or 64, whatever suits your training. Change the width to the width of your training data and the height to the, to the height of your training data.
The next thing to change is maximum batches. If you're using one, two, or three classes, then this is going to equal 6,000. If you're using anything more, then just multiply by 2,000. For example, if you're using five classes, then the maximum batches is going to be 10,000. For the steps, this is going to be 80% of the maximum batches. Okay, and this is going to be nine. This is going to be 90% of the maximum batches. The last thing we're going to change is the number of filters in the convolutional layer above every YOLO layer we have. Okay, and we're going to change it according to the following formula: the number of classes we have plus five times three. Okay, so if we have six classes plus five times three equals 33. Okay, we're going to do, do, uh, do this three times because we have a uh, three YOLO layer. So we're going to do this in every YOLO or in every convolution layer above a YOLO layer. Finally, we're going to change the number of classes in each YOLO layer you find. There are going to be three of them. So in each one of them, we're going to change the number of classes to the desired number of classes. So finally, let's go ahead and run the training instruction and see how it looks like. So remember, you should have your, your data in the right folder. You should have the process file in the right place. Have fixed your configuration file. Forget about this instructions just because I need to specify an additional class in my data set. So forget about that. Okay, so this is how it's kind of like it looks like you know gives you the value of the loss the loss okay and it takes a while one last thing i should mention is the the weights or the model will be saved in a file which you find in the darknet folder okay so this is going to be your weight or your model after the training right, thank you so much guys for watching i know this is not a very fun video it's just kind of like a documentation for me training the YOLO network. And I'm sure that the coming videos are going to be much more interesting. So subscribe if you're interested and have a good day.